I'm so upset, guys, that they turned hoarding into a disease. Does that bother you guys? We are on a mission to eliminate everything interesting from our culture as fast as we fucking can. Anybody doing anything different or weird that we don't like, we gotta stop them. We gotta label it a disease and then stop them. You know, as soon as you cure the crazy cat lady in town, you're gonna have scabbed up dehydrated cats running around everywhere. You need some old 82 year old woman going dumpster to dumpster to dumpster picking them sons of bitches up. You know, and it makes our lives interesting, right? I don't understand it. I'm a big fan of this thing that I'm going to see if you guys understand what I'm saying because this is uh, new and I don't really know where I'm going. So you guys vocally tell me where I mess up, all right? I'm a big fan of what I call creative anarchy. Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I did it last night in Mooresville, but I don't think they were listening by that point. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of creative anarchy. When I was 13 was the first time I experienced it, and I didn't know exactly what I saw, but I just knew I liked it. My parents lived in a suburban neighborhood, you know? Plus, they had a, a neighborhood association where you had to keep your yard cut a certain length, and you weren't allowed to do this, not allowed to do that, you know? And I hated it. And my, one of the kids I played football with, his dad bought a boat. It's a nice looking boat, and he parked it in his driveway, and the neighborhood association said, no, you have to have it under a covered structure. Fucking stupid. So we all built a garage shaped like a boat. <laughs> yeah, that's what the man did. And he painted it to look just like his boat. And then we parked that boat in that garage. <laughs> and that's creative anarchy. He didn't go, fuck you, it's my home. I'll do whatever I want. I'll tear your... He went, all right, watch this shit. <laughs> The same thing Gandhi did, you know, he called it peaceful resistance, but I like creative anarchy a lot better. That has a little more oomph to it, you know? We're not allowed to make salt. Let's go make some fucking salt. <laughs> That's what Gandhi did, one of the many great things he did. <clears throat> peaceful anarchy. Creative anarchy. Peaceful creative anarchy. <laughs> I like creative anarchy the best. What do you guys think? Yeah? Creative anarchy should just be two words, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two words. I met a man. He was 63 when I met him. His name was Frank. Lived in Missouri, just south of St. Louis. Worked Budweiser plant his entire life. His daddy got him the job when he was 15. He worked there from 15 to 59 and a half. And they fired him six months short of full retirement. Now, those, some people in the crowd know exactly what I'm talking about, and I want to tell you guys what it is so everybody knows, okay? If you work for a corporation for in your entire life, you get a retirement package. They give you a check till you die. But if for some reason they fire you short of that, then you get less money. So corporations now, because they can't afford it, it was a deal they made with us, the poor people, a long time ago, and it's biting them in the ass. So poor people are getting chopped off. They did it to my dad. R.J. Reynolds Tobacco fired my dad short of full retirement, and it broke his fucking heart. Crushed my father, because he always taught me, you put your heart in a corporation, and they will take care of you. And then it all, his entire belief system fucking crashed on his head. It's the only time I've ever seen my father cry. And I didn't even know what to do. I just sat there like, I don't know, Dad. I don't know what to do either. You know? They fired Frank six months short of full retirement because he was at work and his wife had a heart attack and he fucking left. He didn't clock out or tell anybody he was leaving. He dropped the fucking phone and fucking went to her side and they fired him. And he was sitting around with his friends, 60 years old almost. What do you do at this point? You're going to get another job now? All you know how to do is put bottle caps on a fucking butt bottle. Where are you going to go? You're going to be a Walmart greeter and lower your pride? What are you going to do with your life? You got bills. So he's sitting around with his best friend who owned the tow truck company in town and his son who happened to be the sheriff of the town. And they were talking about it. And they, the Budweiser plant there has three enormous 
Budweiser cans that advertise, you know? I don't know, they're like maybe 30 feet tall. I, I have a picture of me standing next to one. They're, they're, thir they're probably 30 feet tall. They're enormous. And they came up with this idea, creative anarchy. In broad daylight, they hooked up the semi-tow truck, right? And they hooked up one of those cans. And they drug it to Frank's home. In broad daylight. He said nobody stopped them because it was weird as fuck. He said every window in that factory had three faces in it going, what the fuck? And they called the cops on him. And the cop dispatcher radioed the sheriff who happened to be hooking up a tow winch to the fucking can. And they drug that can to this man's house. It's a working person. One bedroom home, him and his wife, tiny home, and this can fucking dwarfs that house. Oh my God. And the next day they called the paper and they said, we believe we have a story for you. And he told the whole story. I read the article when I met him. It's framed in his living room. Right, yeah, right next to his army picture. <clears throat> and his wedding photo, him and his wife. He told the paper, they fired me because my wife had a heart attack, but they really fired me so it would save money. I took the can. They can have it back as soon as I get my money. Bad press for Budweiser. They gave him his full retirement. Yeah. Yeah. It's creative anarchy. It's not fuck you, motherfucker, none of that. It's let's think of a way to get what we deserve, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah and then Budweiser called the tow truck company and said, how much is it going to cost to hook the can up and bring it back? Well, we'll do that for $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I met the man four years after this had happened, and it's still in his fucking front yard. <laughs> I have a picture of me standing next to it with my arm around him, you know? <laughs> I'm a big fan of that, guys, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Sometimes we have to do that, you know? Sorry, I almost cried. <laughs> <laughs>